It's pretty cool. The pictures you'll be seeing today, the videos you'll be seeing today, and if you look at pictures and videos from state of the art studios around the world, it's basically a table, right. and then the rest of the studio is dedicated to making guests comfortable, making them the appealing place to be in, right. having the monitors, you know, do what you want them to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we've fallen right into that. We hired a designer who knew what uh, this needs to look like in 2023. And we thank all of our friends and supporters for being there for us. I have a present for you. A, a gift! There's a gift! It's a gift that leaves no residue, doesn't have to be unwrapped, but will have a fabulous reaction. Hmm. I have pictures of what all the balloons look like from outside the studio. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I wanted to go downstairs just now. Right? I know, but no you're chance. banned from going down the steps unnecessarily. Oh, wow. There's a... You know, we got There's an edict. This is a yeah. little bit. So I'm going to, I'm so happy Gifter is here, of course, for many reasons. The aforementioned Gifter is Shimon Gifter, professional photographer, videographer, and the guy who figures out a way to get everything on social media again. Correct. <laughs> We're celebrating. We're celebrating. We are the celebrating. Rebuilt, the dedication of the rebuilt studio with a delicious breakfast and so much more. More guests, a lot of guests. In fact. Yes. This is going to be like a, a, a revolving door in the next few minutes. Yes. A lot of guests coming up. Keep it right here at JM in the AM. Uh, so any thoughts on this uh, rededication? You remember what life was like uh, on the 27th of March, 2022. You remember that day, right? I remember that day. I remember many days before then. But the place really, I, I mean, I know we're on the radio, but the, uh, if anyone can get a visual, check social media. But this place is amazing. Uh, and I could say as a, um, as a picky... As a picky sitter, if that's a, that's a word. Yeah. Uh, these chairs are fantastic. The ones in the first room are excellent. These interview chairs are great. I can only imagine what you're sitting in right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they paid as much attention to mine as to the guest chairs, but nonetheless, I am very comfortable, thank God. So, yeah, it is a nice setup and very 2023, as people like to say. Yeah, that's for sure. And the Baruch Hashem we're celebrating today. And, um, but I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of lessons that you and other people who've grown up in our in our family have learned, but this whole uh, transition from what was going on a year ago uh, until today must be, you know, sometimes difficult to fathom, just how different the emotions are and how, uh, how different the times are. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it this morning on the way to shul. Somebody comes over uh, b before the Ask concert, it wasn't even backstage, it was at the donor dinner beforehand, right. and somebody comes over and he's like, oh my God, the Pilachowskis, they are the nicest people, they are the best. You are so lucky to have them as another time. And I look at this person, I go, I am right here. <laughs> Literally. I'll stand and right here. <laughs> Everybody's cracking up, and she's like, I don't even know who this is. <laughs> a quick song, and I'm going to transition people into that. More coming up. You're listening to the celebration of the rededication of the dedication, I should say, of the rebuilt studio in New York City, right here at the Nalcom Single Network. Mayor Weil, who is now one of the coordinators, would that be the right way of saying it? One of the coordinators? One of the coordinators. Pat Nisoski, who's taken over the role of the great Matthew Meyer, is with us to um, to celebrate with us today. Thank you so much for being here today. Nachum, good morning. Thank you very much. It's really, really my pleasure to have come. Uh, Mazel Tov on the beautiful studio. I think everyone should come to see it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I want to say, I know that it's a little late, but Nachum, to someone like you, who's always the first one to step up to the plate, always the first one to help out somebody, I thought it was important to try to be one of the first ones to be here. I appreciate it. And uh, you should have a lot of Hatzlacha. Thank you. And, uh, you should keep doing what you're doing and helping out, help, helping out folks. So. It reminds me of, of all the times that I've been in touch with the organization early in the morning, because there are situations that come up overnight, People will call me and say, what do we do? How do we handle this? And obviously you guys are the first call. So you're always there early for everybody. And I appreciate you being here today. And uh, it, it's also for us symbolic that such a prominent organization is among the first that we're talking about this morning because we do a lot of work for a lot of good causes, especially the causes that no one else thinks of. Like when you and your, um, and your um, staff were on the air recently about what's being done for widows and orphans in the community, which is a unique area that most people don't pay attention to, and you guys are off the charts in terms of what you do for them. Uh, so I'm glad we're able to feature them. Kane Yerbu, we should be able to continue to do this for many, many more years to come. Amen. Amen. I just want to mention, yes, once I'm here, <coughs> that Nyat Hashem Kalamai Pesach, oh. 
we are taking out the families uh, to great adventures. Again, this is the single mothers the single, and their children. The so their fathers have the passed away. Or the fathers and the mothers have passed away. Right. So they're real orphans. <clears throat> real orphans. And, uh, you know, even on the case um, where there's a father and no mother, we all know right. that they're it's difficult. easier for a mother to play Mr. Dad than dad right. to play Mr. Mom. And we're taking them out for a day. There's NCSY, I think sure. it's that day. So you're collaborating with other organizations. That That's wonderful. That is for being here, for celebrating. And we should continue to celebrate. So I thought I pointed out earlier with your brother, the Hatan, that we go from today's celebration to tomorrow's celebration to next week's Hope for Open Yerushalayim to, to the wedding the following day to the Seder in Israel. Video around the world of Rabbi Nachum Segal Nachum and the Nachum Segal Network, and of course on the beloved NSN app. Hour number three of our nine-hour celebration, or I should say eight-hour celebration. Doug Sokloff, the Douglas Sokloff Experience. I wish there was a way, in, in concise form, to describe all the things that Doug is uh, capable of doing for you, just like he's been doing for us. Uh, some of it will come out, obviously, in this conversation. Good morning and welcome to JM and the AM. Amazing to be here. As we say, welcome back, Nachum. Our connection goes back. I mean, I, I like thinking about like while wow, we're sitting here in this beautiful studio, how many times we've had conversations in like meetings in basements of restaurants and I would crawl down into spaces or different places where we've met over over the years. I mean this goes way, way, way back. Um, and to be able to to assist you in, in, in anything. Um, and I think it is is an honor and a pleasure and, and I, I, I always loved our relationship and it, it, it it's like everything else in life, you know, it's ups and downs. And, and you got to be there for the downs, you got to be there for the ups, and uh, that's life, you know. We introduced your first restaurant, what month of what year, on the year? Was it something in 93? Yeah, it was June. June, June. 93. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were laughing. We had such a, it was such a, it just hit on all cylinders. Yeah. It hit on all cylinders. Everybody in this audience was so hooked on Dougie's because of our recommendation to go and enjoy it. 100%, and, and I think... So nostalgic to talk about that, and like also being you know, sitting here today, where there was no social media. Right. Like that, right? This was it. And, and I remember, like, even um, what was the, what was saying went from like uh, drive time remember to that? prime time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. And Jersey City. Right. And then when you opened up uh, here, and old school media versus new school, and how how do you make that? You know, the two of them kind of work and combine. Uh, which is no, you know, no easy balance, but uh, great, great to be here. Mayor Fernick is here, enjoying our celebration. And, and I don't know if people can see, look at the flow going. Hey, got a couch over here. Isn't that amazing? This, this, is, this is like, um... John Tomlinson is here. He leads the Paul Taylor Dance Company, which is the largest tenant of this building that we are in for the last 20 years and has been so cooperative in helping us celebrate today. The all-day celebration that's going to be going on until 3 p.m. You might and we just really love having that sense of community down here and having all our friends down here and looking out for each other. I mean, you know, when, when that fire happened, yes, I came running over, you know, what can I do to help? But so did everybody else. I mean, we were all... Yeah, but you guys really helped. I'm probably going to remember some of the details. You're always running after us to see what can be done. You know this from, you Doug know this from the experience the last couple of days, what little things need to be done, you know, and just that day, well, we needed so many things. But that, that has to do with the fact that we produce shows for a living, okay? So we're, that's what we do. We put on shows. And so we know about all the details that go into putting on a show. You're putting on a show every day. You, we, we get the show it. must go on. It's and it was the next day. morning, as you know. I know. So that's why we are a little bit more sensitive to it than maybe, uh, you know, very important. Dong is down in the Chinese kitchen. Right. That's it. Maybe he doesn't understand that, but we do, and so we do, and we love, you know, we, we love helping out and being friends and being neighbors. So it's all good. Very important point. I appreciate that very much. Thank you for everything. We're going to go to this song. I want to take some pictures with uh, with John and uh, to you and the Paul Taylor Dance Company continued success, and we should only see each other success. Well, we wish you great success as well. Thank you so much, Doug Sokolov. Thank you. More coming up, of course, if you keep it here at the National Signal Network. Middle of hour number three, and sitting in front of me, the aforementioned Miriam L. Wallach, and somebody who at one time spent a tremendous amount of time in this space, not in this studio, because obviously we're not in the same studio, mm -hmm. 
and that would be Yoni Pollock, who serves as our social media director, but has not been in this. You were never. You were not here. No, first time. You have not been here since the fire. Long time, first time. You never walked in after the fire broke this place. No. To the ground. Well, not to the ground. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we lost 20 pretty big, massive units. If you count all the CV players and all those different things we had, and, and they're all in here. They're all basically these two things, and this is superfluous, but, but it makes my job. Did you play that final circle thing? I got him a record player. Yeah, which I still, I still don't understand why. So are we actually going to install it, or is it just going to be no, there like, is it, like a museum? Yeah, exactly. I love in the old vinyl. days. Right. But there is no more vinyl. It, no. Yeah. We're not buying vinyls now. That's yeah, where we draw the line. Oh, right. anybody who offers me anything from their collection or memorabilia, no, nope. please don't deliver it. When so many people never going to post any beloved NSN app. Wraps up an amazing Thursday, but there's plenty more coming up. We're preempting everything and going straight through to 3 p.m., so stay tuned and keep paying attention to the Nautilus Seagull Network as we continue to celebrate here on a Thursday morning the dedication of our rebuilt studio in New York City. Thanks so much for tuning in. Plenty more coming up right after our theme. Uh, till then, Alpha Single reminding you, remember the past, live the present, and trust the future. All right, we go from JM and the AM to a, a continued celebration of the Alpha Single Network studio dedication. Uh, we are here in Lower Manhattan on the Lower East Side, where we've been for the last 20 years, believe it or not. Even when we were broadcasting from Jersey City, the majority of the um, work that we were doing as a network and uh, as commercial radio was emanating from here, from this space, which is now completely different, to say the least, uh, and looks completely different than it did a year ago. On the 27th of March last year, we had the um, studio fire. The story's been told enough times, that's for sure. And uh, here we are a year later in this celebration. Let me introduce some of the people who are here. Yoni Pollock is here. He is going to be here for the next uh, little while before heading to Grill on Lee in Williamsburg. Uh, Chief of Staff Egal, that's Egal Siegel, is here with us. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Nathan. Microphones don't pick up anything anymore. <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. When, when, when ZK installed the studio that we ended up using in my son's room post fire, mm -hmm. I said, oh my gosh, this, this, this microphone is right next to the FDR drive. Literally, it's at the window of the FDR drive. Nobody will ever hear the thing. Because that's the way things feel. Yeah. Well, when we did the show from Israel during the, right. uh, the, we, the people did hear the, uh, we got comments. That yeah, but that was an exception. Was that one siren or something? Was, I think my son was talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. He has a siren. Maybe, maybe not every microphone is going. I, think it's I, I will say, we heard a siren before or something that was going by. Right. Okay. That's well, a, that's a, that was right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, if you have an air conditioner, you're going to have non soundproof. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, okay, a, I can't hear the air conditioning on, on the air. There's a window unit in there. This desk goes up <laughs> and down. Some would think, wait, it's a fancy desk. Does it go up? Yeah, but not only does it go up, it goes, it goes up and down. Imagine well, that. What I'd like to see in the next iteration of it, though, is that it automatically adjusts the mic pool so that it stays in front of your and, and, and you think you're being funny. I haven't learned how to use them yet. There are four yeah. presets on here. You could set it exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So really? I can walk in and say, okay, I want to do the show in this way. Uh, we, we try. We try to bring people together uh, from different groups, um, and we try to get people to talk to each other. It's very difficult at this time. Uh, my dad, the late assemblyman and Judge Howard sure. Cohen, used to say, son, you have to work both sides of the aisle, otherwise you're out of business half the time. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn to work with people. I see a little bit happening, a little bit happening in Washington, uh, which would be miraculous, but it's starting. Oh, and we just like launch that. A new business? Yeah. Tell, tell me it's not 24 hour radio, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's Yummy Blessings 2.0. And it kind of basically, we did chalk bars with inspirational quotes on it. Kind of to empower teens and kids to just talk to each other and share their stories and learn from each other. Yeah. And we're trying to do that with Yummy Blessings 2.0. Yeah. And that is our goal. Yeah. And we're going to be launching a new Kid, but first, let me say, welcome, Rabbi Klobuchar. Thank you. Great to be You've been in this space before. It looks a little different than the last time you saw it. It's a bit uh, roomier. <laughs> a bit roomier is right. And I was thinking this morning as I was davening, 
that nobody ever says on the Kodesh Nisan, oh, you know, it's the yard side of Nadab and Abiyu. And that I've never heard. Right? Because you know, <laughs> we're already skipping top notes, though. Right? <laughs> we don't need yard sides, right? But, but this, so this day, Rosh Chodesh Nisan is mentioned in Shemos, it's mentioned in Vayikra, it's mentioned in, in Bamidbar, each in a different context. And on the one hand, it's a very sad day, it's the Vayido Maharon. On the other hand, it's opening day, it's the opening day of the Mishkan. I'm sure that's why you picked this day. Yeah, right. <laughs> the new he, Mishkan he, of the Lower East Side. picked the day. Yes. Okay. And I think that throughout your entire career, which we've been following closely for a very, very long time, you have been able to demonstrate how to fuse the challenges of life, the down parts of life, and always infuse them with happiness and with positivity and with the ability to look forward and to look ahead. And we know the things that have happened over the years, and they always happen at the worst possible times. But you have always, always manage to be positive and to inspire others. When you're in your perhaps darkest place, and you inspire others. So on a day when last year was Vayida Maharon, there was no word. What could you say? You come, you saw, it was your son's birthday, right? And he just got his license. You remember that. And Ten minutes before the fire, yeah. we were informed that Gabri, our youngest child, passed his road test for a father no greater day. <laughs> Ten minutes later. Yeah. Right. And now here we are with this a beautiful, bright, you turn it into something unbelievably positive, and you're not one who dwells on negativity. You're always dwelling on positivity, and that's really what keeps us going. And they were sort of in the mode of we got to document certain things, which we were just you know, which obviously I wasn't focused on. We have to save certain things, obviously, which we were to save the scrapbooks and stuff. Like they were in that frame of mind. Like you know, we just we just have to you know get in the moment yeah. and even though it's a disaster we have to you know, think what we're gonna you know want to see and preserve six months from now and that's why I think those photographs were so poignant because they were thinking ahead and, and realizing nobody wants to see these pictures today but uh, we'll want them forever yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's in here. It's yeah just, now look at this yeah. and what do you think you, you're out of the door at five o'clock in the morning it's dark it's cold it's crazy Next, you're going to ask him when he died. Yeah, but that's like... Mm -hmm. No, I know. That's actually in the, in the quasi-short documentary that we made. He discusses that slightly. I remember. So why don't we do a part two, where that was the end of an era, and this is the beginning of if an era. If you're serious, I would love to do a part two. Are you kidding me? Fine. I should come in here on a Wednesday. I'd love to do it. It would be beautiful. No, you we'll, start we'll there. Two with me walking yeah, forward. Yeah, it'll, it'll be exactly... I would love to thing. do that. That's but good. we have to do the walk and talk. Like, oh, 100%, of course. Or, or maybe you could sleep on the floor in Jersey City that night. And <laughs> So, this is a project I'd love to embark on, Stu. Were you listening to this? Something big just happened, you go, and Chief, you missed it. Chief of Staff needs to know about this. You were all, oh, this is, this is in Israel, right? Wow. Well, you said Wednesday? Next time Can you do, do a trip to Israel. Oh, oh, he's going to do it, do it on too. Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> to, to battling documentaries. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Continue all your amazing work on behalf of the Jewish people. Thank you. What, what comes out of this studio gives her chios, gives her inspiration, the Torah, the music, um, your positivity and uh, you know your creativity for the Jewish community is appreciated by her, but really by thousands and thousands, millions of people around the world. Thank you. about the great state senator, Simcha Felder. Anyone and everyone who has been involved in any way with Nachum Siegel and the program, the issue is that he has done us a favor, not the reverse. And again, for many, 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 many years of good health to come. Thank you so much. You, you and I wish you the very best going forward and many, many more years and good health and happiness. Uh, continue leading this great network and I'm used to all that. You know that you mentioned on the air yesterday that neurologist, I mean, there was a study, someone said yeah. to me. Neurologist said that. Um, the, the most common time of day for people to faint is when they wake up. Yes. Someone tries to get out of bed, it's the most common time when there's fainting cells. Why? Why? So they determine it's because the body has to adjust when you get out of bed to the flow of blood that's coming from that lower half of your body to the upper half, and it takes time to just get settled. Right. Average time it takes for blood to do that? 12 seconds. How many words are there to Modani? Oh, wow. 12 words. It's really crazy. You get up, you sit on your bed, you say Modani, and those are the 12 seconds that your body is 
Wow. As you thank you, God, it's re re recalibrating. It's recalibrating. Right. It is the Yussie's Wine Thursday Live Lunch with co-host Nachum Siegel and Mayor Ferdy, <laughs> and Mayor Ferdy on the Nachum Siegel Network. Mike Zakheim, who has been a very outspoken proponent of the Nachum Siegel Network, has always admired the work that we do, and I thank him for that. And he is here today. Mike, it's a pleasure to welcome you. It's an opportunity to once again do it personally to thank Nachum for what you are. As someone who tries to be involved with a chesed or a follower, I look at pride yourself not to have to just look up true, but look as far as the work that is done is magnificent, magnificent work. I enjoy his interviews amongst others. So I hear him almost every day. And to hear the interviews, whether it's a rub, whether it's about a book, whether it's about a yeshiva, about a moshev, first of all, he has to do some homework to get, to get a background of what he does. But he does such a magnificent job as far as interviewing is concerned. Sometimes I wish he would have been stronger with some. <laughs> yeah, politically, say. right? <laughs> but really, tremendous Akaros had told. My brother is the years that Akaros Rochel gave him to be so successful. Akaros Rochel now, in the Arakan, are going for Simchan. They resulted that the last year started sometimes when from a difficulty comes out to Rochel. And the Rochel should continue on and we need to thank him and to give him Akaros Rochel from ourselves, from Klaisro, because really he represents us. And sometimes, especially in today's times, we need a voice, and we need the right voice, and the voice, the voice to, to improve and to control and to hope that the future will be there, our future, where Akaros Rochel promises to be our future. I remind this audience listening around the world that 20 years ago this month, 20 years ago exactly this month, our David Feinstein Zatzal put up the mezuzah right here on the door of our studio. It's a picture to thank God we have and was preserved, and we were able to, um, to show everybody through social media. Today we have the incredible privilege of having the Karin Rosh Hashiva, Rav David's son, Rav Beryl Feinstein Shlita, here with us in the studio on Grand Street, in suite number three, to affix the brand new mezuzah, which was donated by the Fast family of Israel, the brand new mezuzah on our brand new studio. Harav Feinstein. Mazel tov, mazel, mazel tov, tov. this mezuzah and this new location, because it is in fact a new location, even though it's the same space, should bring a lot of bracha and slacha to us, and we should be able to continue to spread words of Torah, words of joy, and words of unity to the worldwide Jewish community. Rebbe, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm going to go. Way to go. I'm back here, and I'm like, it's, it's beautiful. It's very different than it was, but it is beautiful. We're Thank making God. new memories. Here. Yeah, that's right. Gonna... And congratulations, You're 10 years, it's a pretty big 10, ten plus. 10, ten plus. plus. 10 now, 10 plus, but I'm, I'm actually going to hit 300 shows in like three shows. Wow. We're going to do a big celebration, guys. We have to plan something. Oh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. We really mean well, truly thank you for bringing Thank you, all the best be much, Leo. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much. See, this is the hardest part about grandchildren. You can sit and just look at them all day and then certainly be distracted from work. But my just tell you. First of all, a big hello to Heshi Lowen. It's hello. Thursday. I'm, it's Thursday. I'm assuming he brought me a very, very oh, yeah. good pot of chalum to enjoy. No. Oh, yeah. That all sorts of memories. And Baruch Hashem, my only bracha to you is that you should vote me high and high. That's a great picture. But listen to seen as the second long distance traveler to be here. Yigal obviously the first. He traveled 6,000 miles. This is the scene that takes second place. Usually she's in first place when it comes to traveling to some and stuff. I, I can't thank you enough. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm somewhat, I'm, I'm actually humbled and slightly uh, and slightly uh, embarrassed that you traveled so many thousands of miles to come to this uh, to come to this celebration. But thank you. The friendships and relationship that we've developed over the years is remarkable. It's special, and 
my whole family, you know, would have been here this morning if they could. They were not able to, but everybody is here and rooting for you and so thrilled you. to be able to even celebrate from afar with you. We're all just thrilled. Mazel tov. Amazing, abundant bracha and mazel. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for spreading the word and being so proud of what we do here. It's much appreciated. And you get to our first immediately, and that is, of course, Inspector Richie Taylor of the New York City Police Department. What an honor to welcome you to the Novel Medical Network. My honor to be here. Always listen to you. Always a great show. Always great times. And we must have on the beautiful, beautiful Grammy opening. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, we've had some interesting encounters over the years. Yes. Um, everything from crazy things that happen backstage at events. I mean, yes. it's no coincidence that when there is a large event going on uh, in the Jewish world, people are calling on you to you know, help with logistics and help with the chaos that could prevail. One is not careful, right? Uh, and make it organized chaos. Organized chaos is right. It's always better for the police department when it's organized and when it's expected. Yes. But does anybody in this room know how the inspector and I first met? And the answer is that at a Hass concert, you approached me backstage and said there was a missing child. And the suspicion was that that child, if he's found, um, it, it, or if someone spots him on the street, they're going to call the police department 911. You know, somebody who doesn't look like they are, you know, capable of handling things themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or they scare him away. Or they scare him away. That's even worse. We end up on a subway going somewhere, and then you guys would be looking for him all night. Yes. So you asked if I would make an announcement from the Hask stage that described the young man, you know, what he looks like, and that if someone sees him, don't call 911. I didn't say this part. But don't call the NYPD. Call Hatzala. Right. Or the NYPD. I've been called 911 and Hatzala. Correct. Hatzala is called as well. Why? Because they'll know how to deal with someone in our community in this type of situation, et cetera, et cetera. And what happened? Somebody at the event who's in the audience goes to their car and sees that someone had gotten into their car and, of course, would immediately have called the authorities or taken on a much more drastic action, but remembered, chased or chased them away, chased but remembered, and they heard the announcement inside the arena. And sure enough, Hatsala came, or you guys came, wherever it was, and yes. took care of it. Isn't that crazy? It's an amazing crazy story. That's how amazing. We, and by the way, and I always tell this to you, I think a million times before anybody, even people of authority, asked me to make that announcement from, uh, from the podium. I think a million times whether it belongs, the right thing, I always err on the side of caution. But in that case, Inspector, it just <laughs> seemed like, I don't know, this guy has a real handle on what's going on, and I've got to go out there and make this announcement. That's a big compliment. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, the compliment's well deserved. And since then, we've enjoyed a great relationship. Cut. Woo! Yay! 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 Amazing opportunity that we have had over the years to inspire people with words like that. You ever count, you know, people ask me how many shows I've done, right? Really? My standard answer now is we're getting close to 10,000 Jane names, at least according to Montes. And you talk about 10,000 hours, right? We're talking about almost 30,000 hours, which is, you know, an astounding figure. Every day you're giving a to our Torah. Multiply that by, I mean, my gosh, you're doing this as, as about 42 years because you predate me. It's, it's an unbelievable privilege that we have to share all this with everybody and to do so on a level that reaches, obviously, not just a few people, but, you know, so many people, and to do it on a consistent basis. And every time you present something, it just adds more and more and more to the volume we'll be able to accomplish. I don't know why this is striking me today, but just as we're sitting here, you know, talking about today and the future, I'm thinking about everything that we've had the opportunity to do together till now. And came you, which just continue. And uh, Rabbi Goldwasser, I have one last uh, thing I have to reveal to you. You may not think this is a priority, but I believe it's one of the most important aspects of the brand new studio. I'm ready for it. It's because of Rabbi Dr. Josh Joseph, who sits to your left, that I have a desk that goes up and down. Rabbi Goldwasser, up and down, not just up, but up and down. So I walk into his office, saw it, and we have to order it immediately. What do you think? Shulchan <laughs> Melochim. <laughs> Leave it to the rabbi to take the most practical piece of equipment and turn it into a dvar Torah. I love it. <laughs> Gershon, me and you together. You ready? He can open Yeshua Nata Uba Nuba Charta Mikolam Belashon Tarabu Kelpa Well Yeshua. I joke with Shulam Lemmer about that. I said because back then they didn't want me to sing the original Piano Man, which I would have 
preferred. Who's they? The audience. Because oh, in concert. Oh, yeah, in what concert, are you doing? Right. But then right. Make, make it pretty. It doesn't it, pop. It's a Jew, right. to Jewish stuff. Right. And then show them records it, records the original. Right! Album, and it flies. That's right! And I was joking. How with, unfair life is! And Sean said, he said, I didn't know about Billy Joel until I heard your cousin. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did so I said, I said, show him. I don't, I don't get it. You, you're doing it, it now. It's a big hit, and I, I was not allowed to do that. Did, am I really supposed to believe that John at the bar is a friend of yours? Shul's <laughs> <laughs> not made for talking, right? <laughs> and what's the Bungalow Colony one? That's what five hundred miles. Five hundred miles. Right. What burns so? I would travel five hundred miles to one of the lyrics would, to do what? To to I be with mosquitoes today. I would drive 500 miles to, uh, to be in a just to be in what uh, uh, I would drive 500 miles uh, 500 more just to be in Woodburn, living in a one one room shack with a ripped screen door. Ripped screen door. <laughs> Double it up. You know what they always say about the Catskills. If Jews were forced to live that way, they'd call an anti-Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> I was interviewed recently for making a film on that. Um, Seriously, before something. we reveal who you are. Okay, something. If I'm not just saying, the, the first time you were ever in touch with me, you mentioned how you heard me and ZK on Yeah, that. you're ZK? Ah, uh, away. <laughs> no, I'm Layden, ABC Radio. No way. Oh, wow. The morning show, which, by the way, this is an interesting story I can tell here. So I go, I, I, it was after the 9-11 attacks, my wife and I decided to move out of Manhattan and just try something different. Not necessarily because of the 9-11 attacks, but that was the time frame. And um, we, I got this offer to host a morning show in Charleston, South Carolina. By the way, I had never heard of Charleston, South Carolina before, but we flew down there and uh, fell in love with the place. And I was like, how can I not live here? I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just this beautiful great town on the water. And um, I signed the contract to come down, and I got down there, they said, Listen, uh, your name is to New York. <laughs> like, okay, I know what that you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, what does that mean? He goes, uh, your name is Jeff Lewis. So I said, really? And I said, well, if you told me this before, and I never would have come down here. I'm not going to not use my name on the air, right? And so uh, he said, well, that's your name. You have to use it. And I had signed the deal, and we had to move the moving truck had come down already to South Carolina. I was like, okay. So I had this big piece of paper in front of me the first day I went on the air that said Jeff Lewis, because I was like, I'm not going to even remember this name. So I thought, oh, God, are they like, is, is this anti-Semitism? Like, what's going on here? It was just so bizarre, you know? So uh, I do some bit on the air where I go, tell me the best places to have brunch, something like that, just an introductory to introduce myself to the audience. And this, I take a call, and this woman, uh, she's like, Allison from Mount Pleasant. I say, Allison from Mount Pleasant, you're on the air. She goes, I'd like to thank WSC very much for hiring their first Jewish person on the air. <laughs> oh, my God. And, she goes, and I thought the same thing. Like, Jeff Lewis sounds like a Jewish guy, right? I mean, I might get a Jerry Lewis, Jeff Lewis. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, gotcha. <laughs> Day one of our brand new facility, Welcome Elegance. It's just missing a few of my pictures. You know, the newspaper article. You remember that? Yeah, uh, you know. The one you wanted to forget, but it, the one I wanted to burn. Yeah, and then it ended up getting burned. I'm not saying a thing. I'm not saying a thing. Ali, I'm saying a thing. Probably the only piece of controversy I ever hung up in the studio, frankly. Aloha, Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, Asher Tishav, Mitzvah Tifanu, Mitzola, Mizuzah. Amen. Now, Ari, I'm caught. Like I'll take photo. It's all good. Of course. Many, many, many more great years to be success, mazel, of spreading good word. And you should always have the health and strength to continue on, you, your whole family. You should always be a source of inspiration for the high school, as you are, and have to be for so many decades. You always have great success. Thank you very, very much. Amen. Thank you. From here, you spread Judaism, Yiddishkeit, simcha, happiness to the whole world. So you should continue with lots of simchas and nachas from not only your personal family, but your collective audience all over the world and continue spreading the goodness and kindness that you do. May we merit that you should be able to speak about the coming of Mashiach now. Amen!
Okay. Brilliant. Video Maven is here. He wanted to reminisce for a moment about some of the incredible productions that we were able to do together. Because audio was never good enough for you. You wanted to make sure that stuff was good enough video. And we have some incredible shows. Remember the Kosher Fest shows? Kosher Fest. And we did live. We did a couple of events live at Eichler's. Yeah. And his bookstore did the original video. And the Royal Baskets were full. Do you know how long ago that was? I have all these That's videos. That's 25 years ago. Of course, getting back to Kosher Fest, the Nakam Disney, one of the first shows that had that whole show. Yeah. Live in New Jersey, at Uppsala College, I haven't been to many. But uh, we had a past concert, Mark and David, I'm free. Uh, El and Denny. Also got to be 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Close to 30 years. We have major, major, uh, great videos. Where are the tapes? And I have the video tapes originally Do you have them? in my office on my desk. <laughs> and on top of that, I remember Dougie's Barbecue Grill. We had the famous uh, Dougie's. And we had the big rib steak. Remember that one? We had, we had fun over there. I'm sure that rib steak made it to the video. That's for sure. Yes. But, uh, well, How do people reach the video maven? Well, my famous phone number, of course, 347-242-0088. There you go. I appreciate you being here. A lot of water under the bridge, as they say. Oh, yeah. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication, Nahum. I appreciate it's that. Really, man. truly great inspiration to Collins Row. So, Moshe Rabbeinu's bracha, when the Mishkan was dedicated, among other things, was the Noam Hashem Elokeinu Elohim, that the Noam, the pleasantness, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu should be upon us when we finish building the Mishkan. So it's an interesting, uh, interesting word, Noah. You know, the pleasantness of Hashem. You would think, you know, bracha from Hashem, success from Hashem, shalom from Hashem. There are a lot of things that we do that are worthwhile in life, and they're good, and they, they're meaningful. They're not always pleasant, especially when you're going through them. Bracha Moshe Rabbeinu gave when the Mishkan was dedicated it was that it should be meaningful and positive and do great things and you should enjoy it while you're doing all those things. No, I'm Hashem So that's our, our humble bracha for this new endeavor that it's always been meaningful, it's always been positive, it's always spread Jewish pride here in the neighborhood and beyond. And it acquainted so many people with their heritage in so many different and unique kind of ways. But you should enjoy doing it while you're doing it also. No, I'm Hashem Elokim. Amen. Well, I do God. say I haven't worked a day in my life, so that would be a good indication <laughs> that I am enjoying it. And I can't thank you enough for being here and, of course, for your service to this community for two decades. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Tzvi Ram served for 20 years as rabbi of the Yalas Becker Synagogue. And our family is privileged to call him and his rabbits and friends and the leaders who were very effective during their time here. And what a way to wrap things up. Mayor Fertig, I thank you very, very much, to say the least. You are very, very welcome. And for everybody, Yigal, and everybody who served as producers this morning and this afternoon, and co-hosts, and all the special guests. Mary, Mary, Mary Wallach, of course, was here early on, and all the wonderful people that stopped by during the day. Uh, Regular listeners, so to speak, and you know, members of the community who are recognized as leaders in our community. Just a spectacular and wonderful um, morning and afternoon. And people we've known for years and people we've never met before. That's right. It was great. It was really special. A lot of exciting things happened today, thank God. Uh, a real pleasure. And of course, a special thank you to Stacey Siegel. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, for her uh, incredible support. Boy. All I could say to the people out there is if, God forbid, God forbid, you suffered through the tragedy that we had one year ago, you want to have people like Stacy Siegel at your side. That's all I want to say. No doubt. Yeah. To have someone at your side who it continues to reassure you that I know how rough things are, and I always remind you about that every face up, but we're not going to do this now in the air. How, no matter how rough things are, I know that things are going to be incredible. And sure enough, a prediction came true. Uh, thank you, Avrami. I hope you're ready to take things over uh, here at the um, uh, the Nachum Siegel Network. And I thank you for all your efforts over there in Israel. And I hope to see you, please God, next week in the Holy Land. But until next time, everybody, tomorrow morning from our New Jersey opening. That's right. We've got a nice condensed program tomorrow morning for our New Jersey studio opening. Until then, it's Malcolm Siegel reminding you, remember the past, live the present, then trust the future. 
And that is that. Yeah. Thank you very much.